Shall we play viewers? Here's one of my usual uh, scoping spots, but I'm doing something that I haven't done in quite a few, few years. And I'm not taking the shortcut off to the left, I, Jen. I'm going to be veering off to the right. It's been a long, very long time since I've done a short day from Wharton Creek. Hi, 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 hi. Uh, let me see, Graham, I have to get my spectacles off. Paul, you're, you're in here too. So I've been bombing along the past uh, couple hours. And usually I start off early in the morning from Wharton Creek and do a very long day to Solomon's, but that's not the case today. I had an easy morning and did an oil change and an oil filter change and a transmission fluid change. Yep, good afternoon. And had a shower and got rid of some trash because my buddy that runs one of the, uh, no Johnny. Yeah, well, you know, Donnie has to up his game, but I think you'll be seeing you'll be seeing a lot more of Donnie than you will be of me, because he uh, <laughs> he certainly has a good good enough signal where he is, and my signal is, is so dependent on my location. Plus, I have to show you something interesting. He's getting rained out. Okay, so I was wondering where Donnie was. Uh, for those of you who aren't in the know, Donnie is is a scoper who who sits in a tractor and you get to talk to him while he's going up and down either harvesting corn, harvesting soybeans, or in the spring doing planting planting projects. So normally you don't see this view at this viewpoint. Here I am at the front of the boat and I had to sail out. So you only get kind of this this view. Um, normally I am doing a long day so I angle off and take a little shortcut over there. Whoops! I really don't want to drop this phone in the sea. That would be bad news. It is, it's a very, very nice day. Um, the wind was a little bit fresher when I left, but not enough to cause any trouble. And I was bombing long. And one reason for, uh, for doing an easy day today is the current in this area isn't, isn't wicked strong, but it's, it's, it adds up. So I said, I'll, I'll do my oil change, which is a little bit late anyhow. Hello, 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 everybody. I did my old change and, and went on shore and, and saw, saw my friend and did my errands there in the boatyard. It's so nice to have a fresh shower after uh, uh, quite a while of my wheel man. What wheel man? Graham. Graham, Graham, you have to understand something. I'm by myself. There is no wheel man. Look. <laughs> There's, there's nobody back there. I'm by myself on this little boat. Well, this is a kind of interesting view, too. Uh, the wind has shifted around. Yep, there we go. Wicked strong. I have a wicked, we have a wicked strong, yeah, a wicked strong current. So, the wind has shifted around. It's mostly from, from almost straight behind now. And, you know, looking in the other direction, we were just looking into the glare of the sun. This is the better direction to look in. And you can see there's a bit of lively uh, wave action. And I'm, I sort of automatically am stabilizing... Oh, a little bit of a bouncy there. Stabilizing the camera on the horizon. So you can see the boat is both uh, swinging around and, and wobbling a little bit. No yelling commands. If you have to yell commands, then you've done some poor training. People don't want to be yelled at. Not on a pleasure cruise. I, I used to race with people, and, and they didn't yell either. And that's when, when stress levels are higher. Because if, if, you know, I'm a low-key sailor. If, if someone was yelling at me, I'd say, just forget that. Just, just, just don't fly. No yelling. So anyway, you can see it's kind of a lively day. The, uh, I just checked the apparent wind speed was, was fairly low, it was like eight, but I'm bombing along at, at seven and a half knots. Um, this boat motor is at six and a half. Its hull speed is seven, and to be bombing along at a seven and a half is, is pretty good. That tells you what the current's doing. So, so I had time today, so I didn't, didn't need to do a killer, another killer day. I had my errands. 
because I timed it today so I'd have the tide with me. Your your boat speed is six. Well, that's a decent speed. You can go places. You can go places at six. I better turn around and pay attention here because there's nobody. There's no ch nobody uh, checking. <laughs> Let me walk up. Is anybody in front of me? There's, there's no one paying attention here, and so I see. Uh, I think it's an anchored ship. Well, I don't know. I see two ships in front of me, and I'm going to go under the main span. Yeah, six is well. I guess if it's a fishing boat, you want to go places. You you need a better boat, or or a lot more money first, right? So I'm kind of lucky there isn't isn't any kind of crazy activity. So I see three ships. Um, one off to the right is definitely anchored. I had checked uh, I checked this area on, on my AAS display earlier. I think one of those ships might be coming along. So I hope to be through this bridge and turning off to the right before that's the case. And I'm also lucky. Uh, there's a lot of boats sailing around. A flat bottom with a small keel. Well, there you go. And how, how Graham, how, how long is your, your little fishing boat? I really want to look underneath the sail. Is anybody coming? Oh, I can't bend over enough. Oh, there's nobody coming. You know, if it doesn't get up on plane, you have to drink fewer beers, Graham. Save, save some weight, right? So over here is the uh, a lighthouse that uh, you go up to, to Baltimore if you're a ship or a tugboat. Um, we had a tugboat pulling a barge going by, and its 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 display was saying it was going up to Camden, New Jersey, which was past Philadelphia. Uh, that boat, which you might be able to see, yeah, 24 foot, well, 6 knots to 24 foot is okay. But you can't, you can't expect too much more than that. So the, the boat behind me should be faster, but he's not trying. If his motor's running, it's not running full tilt. So I passed him a while ago. And it's kind of funny, the, uh, the boats I was kind of traveling around yesterday, I've been traveling around today, so they all decided to also have an easy day and only only depart later in the morning or, or after lunch. I've created the engine gearbox and new prop and have you done all that and still get six knots or is that that before uh, before testing? Oh so with the sail up I really couldn't scope from from inside the, uh, the cockpit. And I think I'm still aiming for the middle of this bridge. And there's no buoy in front of me. And no sailboat. Haven't tested yet. I thought you were still doing some work. I don't remember if I've ever sailed under here with this boat. I don't think I have. Usually it's calm when I go through here. Yeah, the old, an old, well, heck, what do you expect from a two-cylinder? Um, now, now, Graham, you said you've changed everything. Do you, uh, are you going to put your boat back in the water and then do a, a wide-open throttle test and see if your propeller is correctly sized for the engine? Whoops, looks, look at that. Sail's bopping me on the side. Because you want your, you want your propeller pitched just right. And maybe you already know this. You want your propeller pitched just right so the engine runs at its specified wide-open throttle RPM. I just went through all that with my boatyard, and and they screwed up big time. And I had told them so. Did the prop made for the boat? Well, when when do we find out how how it works? We have to wait until next year. So I think I'm headed for more or less the middle of this bridge, and I'll, I'll keep standing here for a moment. Um, but I need to run back. I'm going to have to make a, a sharp turn to the right. Well, not too sharp, but something of a turn to the right. And then I'm only a few miles from my, my destination. It's a sweet little anchorage, and I just hope it's not full. I, uh, I've been traveling... I've been traveling with a lot of boats. This is a little late for me. Yeah, a big pitch. It might be too big. We have to talk, Graham. You don't want to be... Uh, 
you don't, you don't want your engine to run too slowly. You want it to, to be on the right point of the torque curve. Maybe you know maybe you know all this, but if in case you don't, you have to do some testing with the boat in the water. So I'm just plunging along. I don't have much to say right at the moment. I had a, had a little visit with my my friend. His uh, well, it's not his. He manages manages the boatyard. Fifty horsepower. Well, that's good. That sounds strong. And uh, and and how will you will you take your boat fishing overnight, or do you go out and come back at the same day? I met. Uh, so I went to say goodbye to my friend, and he was talking to two young men who are fishermen from New Bedford, which is part of the state that I'm from. And for some reason they were down here talking to him. I didn't get, get the reason why. Day skipping. Okay. And they were curious about my, my route to get from where I started from to where I am, where, where I was this morning. And so I was giving them the list of stops and they said, yep, 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 yep. They know all of those places. But uh, these people will, will take Two, two full days in mean, 40, 48 hours to go 200 miles out to George's Bank and do their fishing out there. So, so that's that's four days of travel just to go fishing. That's uh, you know it's not gonna, you know depending what day it is. Do I have a dragonfly sounder? No, no, I, my sounder is a Garmin. I've never heard of a dragonfly. That must be something, uh, something specific to to your side of the world. Garmin is is big here. And I need to take another look. Hang on, folks. Nobody coming. Uh, the other day I pulled my anchor up. But I still haven't cleaned it off. But I had this wob, this wob of seaweed, and it's still there. Three D. Oh, three D sounds good. I haven't cleaned off that wobble seaweed. Now it's starting to dry. Oh, it is dry. I'm going to put the anchor down in an hour anyway. I don't think I'll worry about that seaweed until some other time. But I do need to worry right now because this is the narrow spot. I don't think... I don't think any of those ships are going anywhere. They don't seem to be getting any closer. And then once I go through the bridge, I'm going to run back and, and have to make a turn to the right. So, so that might be the end of this scope. But this is the interesting part. Here's, here's where we actually have something to look at. Whoop! And if that sail hits my phone and it drops, then, then I'm a sorry sailor. You can see the... I, I, don't think, I don't think the speed limit's very great on this bridge. Or bridge is. There's two. There used to be one and then there was too much traffic, so they added another one. And depending what day of the week it is, I think there's a... Uh, okay, Ray Marine. That's out of New Hampshire. I think depending what day of the week it is, the... Uh, you know, right now, one bridge is one way and the other bridge is the other, but I think they, they might have opposing traffic on one lane, depending if it's uh, a Friday night or a Sunday afternoon. Because everybody over over in this direction is how you get to uh, get to the beaches of Maryland on the uh, on the ocean. So everybody from from Baltimore and Washington and Annapolis that when it wants to go away for the weekend, that's where they go. They go across this bridge. All right, I'm going to go back a few few steps. So I have uh, I have my second sail right here, so I can put <laughs> put my bum. Put my bum against it and stabilize myself. So we're going to go underneath here and, and turn right. And then that's that. So there's a big there's a big set of, of anchorages for ships here that are waiting to go up to Baltimore. And on the chart you can see there, there's a whole bunch of, of circles all, all bumped up, butted against each other. So the ships know where to anchor in the middle of the circle, so it's just picking some random spot. I don't, I don't think there's a vessel traffic services here. They, they just figure out, I guess they figure out where, what spot to anchor in. 
All right, here comes the exciting part. Going underneath the center. Oop. And Autopilot's doing a pretty good job. Now look at this. See, this is the direction you don't want to be going. This is into the current and into the wind. And this little boat is, is I don't know if they're trying, trying to go or not. But all they're doing is, look at them plunging and plunging. This is why you don't want to go. Do I have a skipper's license? There's no such thing as a skipper's license in, in the United States. There's, some states require a safe boating course, and that's a state-by-state -state thing, because too many kids and, and eventually adults would, would wreck and not know what they're doing. So that poor little boat, oh my goodness, I, he's going to have a long day. Yeah, I know, that's a, that's a Europe, more of a European, you, you guys in Europe have more regulations. Alright, let's pay attention here. All the, uh, all the turns have gotten agitated for some reason. So here's the bridges, hooray. Now I need to go back and, and turn right. So I still don't want to, don't want to keep going straight. There's, the trouble is, is after, after here, there's no good place to stop for a considerable distance. So I'm going to work, look at that motorboat just drifting in the tide. So I'm going to work my way back, hanging on to dear life here. Oop! Here's that boat. It was plunging, it's doing a little better now. I hope they don't have far to go. Okay, now we're back in here. There's the, there's the autopilot doing its thing. So, my GPS hasn't quite got to the waypoint yet. I'm going to give it 20 degrees, 10, 20, and then we'll see what the GPS says. Oh my goodness, all right. Uh, another 20, at least. 10, 20. So, off I go toward my destination. It's only 33 miles away, about 30 minutes to the outer, outer buoy. Then there's a narrow little channel that's pretty shallow. How are we doing on course? 247 versus 243, so I need to come up four more degrees. One, two, three, four. How to do it when you can't see the button you're trying to push? So right, there we go, gone through the gone through the bridge. I've never driven here from across that in a car. This is some radio traffic too. Surprisingly, for a nice day, there hasn't been much radio traffic. The uh, the weekend is over. So, there's not so many casual people out sailing, it's, there's a lot of boats just going south that, we're, uh, that are out. So that's it for today. Thanks everybody for watching, I'm down to two people, so I'll scope out and we'll catch you next time. Take care everyone.